Hello, this is Justin at The Tech Train here. And in today's tutorial, I'm gonna share with you a resource that I put together for a couple of my classes, um, just as a starter activity, but it turned out to be something that they really enjoyed and uh, they asked if uh, we could keep it as a regular thing. They, they enjoyed it so much. And it seemed to work quite well in helping to um, encourage them to think about uh, keywords and to increase familiarity with keywords. So I'm going to show you how this uh, works. Uh, this particular topic you can see here <clears throat> is to do with um, IT. And uh, if I just run the PowerPoint presentation, so we have CyberCat's keyword conundrum, and I'm going to click the start button. And basically what we have is about, I don't know how many keywords there are, about 50 keywords there um, from the, the couple of different topics that we were revising. And at the top we have this question. So a type of cybersecurity attack in which huge amounts of data are sent to a server. Now what the students need to do is to look through all these answers and decide which one is the appropriate one. In this case, it's DDoS. So they click on DDoS <clears throat> and they're taken through to question two. By the way, apologies if I have to keep clearing my throat occasionally, I've been a bit rough recently. Um, so we're through to uh, level two and you can see there's a kind of a progress bar or XP bar at the top there. So now we're looking for a type of hack in which sensitive data, such as passwords, is observed by watching someone enter the data. So we're looking for shoulder surfing. There it is down here at the bottom. So I click on that one and I'm now up to number three. And I'm not going to go through all of this. There's I say, about 40 or 50 of these um, words. But the idea is they will have to identify the correct keyword each time. And if they happen to get it wrong, let's choose the wrong answer to this one. Let's click on planning instead. Then we get a cat meme and we um, obviously lose all our progress. We have to click the try again button and we're back to level one. So now we have to go back through this. So of course you can do this either randomly or um, you can have it so that those topics, those keywords near the beginning are the ones which perhaps need more attention because those are the ones they're going to be going over more times than the ones towards the end. Uh, so you can put some of the easier ones at the end, the harder ones near the beginning. <clears throat> and so through um, repeated going back through trying to get to the end, uh, they will um, eventually become more familiar with some of these uh, initial keywords. Um, and if they get through to the very end, so uh, what happens at the very end, well, they get the reward of this uh, meme here. And surprisingly, this became a badge of honor amongst some of the students. They were uh, taking screenshots of this and setting it as their wallpaper on their computers. So uh, they, they really enjoyed it. They enjoyed the competition between each other. Uh, there's a lot of competition in the, in the classroom. Uh, and even students who generally aren't particularly uh, enthusiastic were, were captured by this. It's one of those things that I just thought was a throwaway activity and it turned out to be quite popular. So I thought I'll share it here um, and show you uh, how to create it. The great thing here is there is no coding, no coding at all. It's all very straightforward. Um, so let's start with a brand new presentation and I'll take you through not the whole thing here, but a very simple breakdown of the steps you need to go through. Okay, so I have a brand new PowerPoint presentation. I've got rid of the placeholders and put a simple background uh, there. So how do we get started with this? Well, to begin with, I'm going to just draw a little rectangle and I'm going to right click inside it, edit the text and put in the first answer. So in this case, I'm gonna write PowerPoint. I'm then going to format this. So I'm gonna make the writing a little bit bigger and I'm going to fill the background with gray, put a white outline around the outside to make it a bit thicker, and then add a bit of a shadow. There we go. So this is going to be the first of the answers. So we're gonna have lots of these. I'm not gonna to do too many uh, for the purpose of this presentation, this uh, video, uh, but of course you can have as many as you want. Um, I'm going to, before I copy this, I'm gonna make a couple of other slides so I can start to add um, some hyperlinks or, or actions within this button that will allow me to go from one slide to another. So I'm gonna add a new slide here, and this is gonna be a blank slide, and I'm gonna actually push this at the beginning, and this will be the start slide. So this will be how we begin the presentation. So let's just 
put a big start on here. That's a bit like the Cybercat challenge um, that I showed you at the beginning there. Let's just change the writing there to white so it stands out a bit clearer and just make that nice and big. So obviously you can have your start page however you want, but the start page doesn't have any, uh, any buttons on it other than a start button. So let's just copy and paste that and have that as just start like that. So we have our title page to begin with. Um, we'll also need a slide that is the one we see if we're wrong. So if we're wrong, uh, let's just duplicate that one. Uh, we will have uh, some sad meme, perhaps. Up to you how you do it. I did cats, but it's up to you what you do. And then we'll have um, start again. There we go. So we have our start, we have our wrong, and of course we'll also want our finish. So if you get to the end, well done, uh, you've finished. And then if we want to, we can restart again or we can exit, it's up to you. So we can have an exit at that point. Oops. So we've got our start, our wrong and our finish. And then the first of the slides that will contain all of the buttons. So normally uh, what we want is for all of the buttons to take us to the slide that says wrong because of course they will all be wrong apart from one. And on each slide, only one of the buttons will have a different hyperlink going to the next slide. So what we need is for this button here to be able to link to the slide that says wrong, which is slide two. So with the button selected, and be careful here, don't click inside the button, uh, so that you're editing the text or what you'll do is turn the text into a link rather than the whole shape. So click on the edge of the shape, go to insert, click on action and in the hyperlink to section, click on that drop down, find slide dot 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 and then select in this case it's uh, slide two, which is the slide that says wrong. Click OK and click OK again. So now when we duplicate this, and I'm going to hold control down and then click and drag uh, to create a couple of copies like that. And then I'm going to select all of those, hold down control, click and drag. So we have a few copies of this. Now, of course, you can create as many as you want. I'm just going to create uh, those six. Um, and then I can change the content of each of these. Let's put Excel in that one. Let's put uh, Word. We'll put Blender here, paint, um, and let's have um, Google Docs. There we go. It helps, by the way, when you're doing this to make sure that the first uh, button that you make is the one that has the longest answer, because then you know it fits. Uh, otherwise, if you make a button that's just the right size for, say, a short word like Excel, um, then when you try and put longer words in, you're going to have to either reduce the font size or make the button bigger and then it looks a bit scruffy. So start with the button that's going to have the longest answer in and then you know that the rest will fit. So now we've got these buttons and all these buttons are now pointing to the slide that says wrong. So before we now duplicate this, we just need to have some sort of text box at the top, uh, which is going to have our question in it. So our question, which will be different on each slide, of course, but let's just edit that text. Uh, let's put our first question in here. Um, and this question will be, um, which software will you use to create 3D models? And if you are not sure, then check out my channel for a whole range of tutorials on how to create 3D models and import them into PowerPoint. And the programming question is, of course, Blender. Fantastic free program. If you haven't used it, you are in for a treat. Right, let's just make that text a little bit bigger then and uh, put that at the top there. I think that's fine. So there's our first question, which software will you use to create 3D models? And in this case, the answer will be Blender. Now what I need to do is to uh, make copies of this slide and I need one copy for every single possible answer that I have. In this case, I have six possible answers. So clicking on the miniature thumbnail on the left, 
I'm going to press Control D to duplicate two, three, four, five, six. So that gives me my six slides with those um, answers. Uh, so the next thing I need to do is to click on each one of these slides and select the answer which is correct for that slide. So on this first slide here, which software will use to create 3D models, the answer is Blender. Now at the moment, of course, Blender, like all the other buttons, is linking to the slide, whoops, linking to the slide that says wrong. But in this case, this is the correct answer. So this needs to actually be linking to whatever the next slide is. So if I click on the edge of this um, button and I go to insert action, at the moment, we can see it's linking to slide two. Let's just simply drop on that uh, menu there. Click on slide dot dot. In fact, no, sorry, not slide dot dot. Uh, simply next slide. So there we are, next slide. So whatever slide um, we're on now, it'll just simply go sequentially to, in this case, slide five. So click OK. That'll take us to the next slide. Um, and then on the next slide, we need to change the question and do the same process. Let's change the question on this one. Uh, let's have uh, which software will you use to create um, spreadsheets? And again, in this case, the answer is Excel. So we click on the edge of the Excel button and we click on action and then change the hyperlink to next slide. Uh, let's do one more. So I'll click on the next slide. And in this case, which software will you use to create presentations? So again, here we select the PowerPoint button, click action and change the hyperlink to next slide and so on. Um, and that's pretty much it at the moment. All we want to do now is to make sure that the finish is at the end because the final slide, which I haven't done here, but let's say this is the final one here. If we click the correct answer, it will take us to um, the finish. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete those last three so I can show a working version of this. Um, so now I've got three questions here, and we know that on, in this case, this third question, which software will you use to create presentations, is PowerPoint. PowerPoint, as we know, we've just clicked on the action, takes us to the next slide. And as this is the last question, the next slide needs to be our finish slide. So let's grab the finish slide, drag it down to the very end, so that when we click on this answer here, we'll be taken through to finish and we're done. So those are the question slides. We've done everything we need to there. A couple of other things we need to sort out before we're done. So let's go to the wrong slide or the right slide, whichever. Uh, go to the wrong slide here. And we need this start again button to take us to this first question, question three or slide three. So we'll click on the edge of this button here and click on action, hyperlink to, um, and we can do next slide, it is in this case, or we can do slide dot 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 and select the first question slide from here, whichever. Click OK. Um, and our start also needs to be linked to the next um, slide. So start, click on action, hyperlink to, oops, slide dot dot dot. And our first question is slide three, so we click on that. Um, and then if you want to have the finish exit, we can uh, either have this go back to the beginning, or if we click on the edge and go to action, we can also in hyperlink um, go down to end show, and that'll exit out of it. So the problem now we've got, if we just run this presentation here, so you can see if I click on start, it goes to the first question. Which software will you use to create 3D models? Let's click on Blender, correct. Which software will you use to, uh, to create spreadsheets? To, we use two spreadsheets, all right, well, never mind. Which software will you use to create spreadsheets? Excel, click on that one. Software you use to create presentations, PowerPoint. And there we are, we're at the finish, and we can click exit and come out of the presentation. So that seems to work fine. And in fact, if we click on start and we do the first one, Blender is correct. And then I click on the wrong one, let's say paint. It tells us we're wrong. Click start again, and we're back to the first question. So that all seems to be working fine. So what's the problem? 
The problem is I can click anywhere and simply automatically go through every slide and end up at the finish. So we have to set this presentation up so that we can't click anywhere except the buttons that we have created. Very simple to do that. Simply click on slideshow at the top and then set up slideshow. And these three options at the left hand side here is what you need to change. Uh, you'll be by default uh, looking at the top one and you need to change that to the third one where it says browsed at a kiosk full screen. Now if we click OK and we run the presentation, I can click anywhere I like, it won't do a thing. I can only progress by clicking the start button down here and again here I can't click on anything except the buttons I've created. So click on Blender, we're through to question two. Click on Excel, we're through to question three. Still can't click anything. Click the wrong answer and I'm back to the very beginning. Um, but if I click on Blender, Excel and then PowerPoint, I have completed it. Um, so that's the basic idea. Now you did see in the example before how to uh, have, or the fact that I had a kind of progress bar along the top and that is actually very straightforward. Now, what I would do here is go to the very last question, this one here, um, and decide um, how many questions I've got. So in this case, six, although I'm actually only using three questions. So I'll say the number of questions I've actually created, which is in this case, three. So I would then have uh, some sort of shape. Let's go for a rectangle. Let's go for um, shape and have a rectangle. Uh, like that. And if it's going to be um, going right across from left to right, what you'll need to do is to take the width of your screen. So in my case, it's 1910 pixels across 1910, which is probably the same as yours. And then divide that by the number of questions you've got. Now, if I just get my little calculator here and I put in 1910, uh, sorry, 1920, 1920, uh, divided by three, that gives me 640, which means if I want three of these to be exactly equal across the page, each one needs to be 640 pixels wide. Um, now, that's not going to quite work out because I've got centimeters set up here. So the next thing to do is to work out um, how much that's going to be in centimeters. Um, we can actually, if we go to uh, design and then slide size and then custom slide size, uh, we can actually see in centimeters how wide this slide is in centimeters. Although um, it's going to be displayed in pixels, we can see how much it is in centimeters. It does make a lot of sense, but nonetheless, there it is. Uh, this is 33.867. So let's try 33.867, divide that by three, gives me 11.289. So this box here needs to be, uh, let's click on the shape format there, uh, the width needs to be 11.289. Press enter, and that will now exactly be one third of the screen. Um, so I can, as a shape format, let's have, um, just for the moment, a red fill with no outline. There we are. Um, and then I can duplicate that and then duplicate it again. And you see how that fits perfectly across the top of the screen. So on my third slide, the final question, I've got three of these uh, completed. I'm going to Control and C to copy. Click on the second one, paste, and simply get rid of the third one and then go to the next question back, paste. I'm doing control V to paste uh, and get rid of those two. And there we are. So I've now got my progress bar. So if I click start, you can see I'm at the first one there, which software will use, Blender, there my progress bar increases, software to use spreadsheets, Excel, and finally presentation, PowerPoint. There we are, we've completed it. So that's how to do a very simple um, XP bar or progress bar along the top. And there we are, that's um, that's it. So I hope that you enjoyed that, I hope you found that useful. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions, do leave comments below. If you do like the video, you think that you might possibly use that, then do give this video a like, that would be 
hugely appreciated and of course share as well if you think that it'll be useful elsewhere. Um, if this is the first video you've come across or you feel that you've seen a couple of these and they are useful, I hope so, then do uh, consider subscribing. If you hit the subscribe button, don't forget the bell. And I upload videos uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays at five o'clock UK time, uh, which I believe is 11 in the morning uh, central time. So um, subscribe and you'll know exactly when those videos are going live and what they're about. Um, and that's it. So uh, enjoy. I hope that was useful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.